Soren Kierkegaard's Spiritual Communism. This is from Soren Kierkegaard's 1848 book, Christian Discourses, pages 115 and 116, as translated by the Hongs in 1997. Let us now proceed with the discourse in this way. Let us first clarify for ourselves the difference between riches and riches, earthly, spiritual, and what follows from this difference for the possessor, in order to understand that one must indeed be poor in order to make others rich, and that therefore the poorer a person becomes, the richer he can make others. Every earthly or worldly good is in itself selfish, begrudging. Its possession is begrudging, or is envy, and in one way or another must make others poorer. What I have, someone else cannot have. The more I have, the less someone else must have. The unrighteous mammon. With this term, we perhaps may indeed designate every earthly good, also worldly honor, power, etc., is in itself unjust, and makes for injustice, quite apart here from the question of acquiring it or possessing it in an unlawful manner, and in itself cannot be acquired or possessed equally. If one person is to have much of it, there must be someone else who necessarily gets only a little, and what the one has, the other cannot possibly have. Furthermore, all the time and energy, all the mental solicitude and concern that is applied to acquiring or possessing earthly goods is selfish, begrudging, or the person who is occupied in this way is selfish, at every such moment has no thought for others. At every such moment he is selfishly working for himself or selfishly for a few others, but not equally for himself and for everyone else. Even if a person is willing to share his earthly goods, at every moment in which he is occupied with acquiring them or is engrossed in possessing them, he is selfish just as that is which he possesses or acquires. Not so with the goods of the spirit. In its concept, the good of the spirit is communication, its possession merciful, in itself communication. If a person has faith, he truly has not thereby taken anything away from others. On the contrary, Indeed, it is strange but true. By having faith, he has worked for all others, even apart from what he does directly to communicate to others. During the time he was working to acquire faith for himself, he was working for all others. The whole generation and every individual in the generation is a participant in one's having faith. By having faith, he expresses the purely human, or that which is every human being's essential possibility. His having faith truly does not begrudge others anything, whereas the possession of money by the rich is a kind of envy that has taken it from the poor, who perhaps in turn envy the rich the money, because there is envy in both situations, since earthly riches are in themselves envy. No, the believer has taken nothing from anyone, has in faith no begrudging, and no one should envy him it, but instead every human being should be joyed by him. The believer has only what every human being can have, and to the degree that his faith is greater, to the same degree it is seen, but all the more clearly that this glory and blessedness are possible as a common possession for all human beings.